If you ever watch TV shows, you've probably heard of this one on Netflix called Queen's Gambit. It follows a pretty young chess player who rises through the ranks of competitive chess and plays at a pretty top level, exceeding expectations. I totally recommend it, although I'm going to say that it's not accurate to how chess tournaments actually look, but it, regardless, it is still pretty entertaining. Chess has been around for thousands of years, and recently, researchers have been looking into its effects on cognition and the way you think. Naturally, chess is a pretty big problem-solving game. You have to think ahead. You have to learn, memorize, and process things, and so maybe there is a benefit there. I actually did find a study on this, and today's study looks on the effects of playing chess on cognition and the way you think. Let's take a look into it. What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm reviewing a trial that looks at the impacts of learning and playing chess on cognition, mood, and quality of life. This study was done in June of 2021 by Nuria Sibera and others from the University of Coruña in Spain. For decades, people have been studying on how to maximize cognitive strength and cognition, and a common conclu conclusion is that regularly doing mentally stimulating activities appears to delay the onset of dementia, which is a pretty bad cognitive problem. One specific area of stimulating activities, mentally stimulating activities, is chess, and it's a game that I happen to enjoy as well. I was actually a pretty competitive chess player and was one of the top 100 rated players in the United States for a couple of years. But Regardless, today's study looks at the effects of chess on cognition, so let's jump into it. Looking into the study design, this was a clinical trial looking at 22 older individuals with an average age of 83, and everyone was institutionalized or semi-institutionalized, basically meant they lived in a nursing home or some assisted living facility. The main exclusion criteria were that you couldn't have advanced stages of dementia. There were two groups in total. The experimental group had two weekly sessions of playing chess games for an hour each, for a total of 12 weeks, and the control group simply didn't play chess. The chess group had to attend at least 80% of the classes. Participants were not randomized to groups because they were not gonna force older people to go to something they didn't want to, and you definitely can't do that in a clinical trial anyways. And that makes sense, but it's still an important part of the methods. The researchers measured a few things solely at the beginning and at the end of these 12 weeks. They measured cognition using something called the Montreal Cognitive, Cognitive Assessment, which is also called MOCA, and it looked at these eight domains, and they also used a few other cognitive tests that I'm not going to go into detail for. But they looked at mood using the using a geriatric depression short form scale. They measured quality of life using something the WHO, QOL, OLD, and that's a pretty standard way to measure quality of life based on that was made by the World Health Organization. Let's jump right into the results. Looking at the results, at baseline, there were no significant differences between the chess and the control groups, which is something that you want to have. At the end, they found that MOCA, or the cognitive score, significantly increased in the chess group and relative to control. Mood increased significantly relative to control, but not relative to baseline. And quality of life significantly increased relative to baseline, but not relative to control. In short, the chess intervention caused a significant increase in cognition, mood, and quality of life. The two chess lessons a week were actually implemented as a non-medication treatment for dementia in this specific nursing home that this trial was conducted in. So... That's pretty cool. As a pretty competitive chess player, I do like to see these results. It makes sense that a game that enforces stronger memory, reasoning, problem solving, planning, and strategy causes an increase in cognition, mood, and so on. A larger meta-analysis from 2016 with around 1,800 people found a positive correlation between chess skill and numerical and visuospatial and verbal ability, all components of cognition. Another meta-analysis from 2016 found that engagement in mentally stimulating leisure activities, like chess, was associated with better processing speed and executive functioning later on in life. An interesting article from 2003 talked about the relationship between effortful mental activities like chess practice and reduced probability of dementia. This is more like a use it or lose it mentality. Realistically, studies looking at these mental games and specifically chess have been around for some time and they indicate great benefits of improved cognition and reduced risks of developing dementia later on in life. Today's study was one of the first actually looking at, really, at this relationship from a causal lens, meaning chest training actually caused these changes rather than seeing some correlation or relationship between the two. That's why I really like this study. Simultaneously, this study definitely had some limitations. There are only 22 people in total, which is pretty small and can be less applicable to the general population. All the people were from the same nursing home, they were all very old, and nothing was blinded and participants were not randomized to groups. It's definitely morally wrong and against a lot of rules and regulations to significantly force 
or encourage someone to be part of an intervention, like play chess without their consent or interest. So I understand why they couldn't randomize people to groups, but there could have been real bias where because people wanted to play chess, that level of fulfillment could have increased mood or quality of life or cognition rather than the effects of playing chess itself. But I still do think the results of the trial are important and valid, especially since they reinforce the results of other correlational studies, but that's just my thoughts on that. I really doubt I have many viewers who are 83 years old, so the results likely do look different for people who are much younger. Although it wasn't explicitly tested in younger people, I still did want to review this trial, because I believe the trends can still apply to some degree, and chess can improve mood, quality of life, and cognition. I also think chess is fun, I personally think it's awesome, and so explicitly improving cognition while doing something fun is also cool and easy. Looking at a short summary and takeaways, a clinical trial with a chess intervention of playing and learning chess for two times a week for 12 weeks caused a significant increase in cognition, mood, and quality of life as compared to control. This was one of the first studies to look at a causal relationship between chess and cognition, and the results support the correlational data from previous meta-analyses and other studies. Although this study was done in an older group of subjects, the results can still apply to younger individuals. So although I'm not a physician and I won't give medical advice, I would say I am a literal expert in chess and I was a coach and a licensed tournament director at some point. And I will happily say that chess is a fun game and I encourage you to learn and play chess. I personally use chess.com and who knows, you could gain benefits in cognition, mood, and have a better quality of life as a result of it. But that's all I really had for today. All the sources are in my description, all the studies I talked about. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Do all those things down below to support the channel and to watch more content. But I hope you guys learned something and have a good one. Thanks.